This is inside the house? Yes. Okay. Um, and if you can look to the back here where I've got my, I'm making some, what if anything is that back there? Uh, that's the kitchen. Okay, and this is the dining room and this is on the main level? What we're looking at is the, the dining room table on the main level with the kitchen in the background. Okay, thank you. Now I'm going to ask you to take this jury through your experience, what happened in Australia once you arrived there. Well, I, um, I was nervous because of the conversations that I had with him before I left. And then in, in transit, I stopped in Dubai and spoke to him too. So I was a little nervous, but he indicated to me that he wanted to, me to come. He didn't said, I, I, I miss my wife at the end of the phone call that we had in the, um, in the airport. I called him from Dubai. And um, he, he, he said, I miss my wife, I miss my wife. I felt okay, safe to, you know, it's good. and I, I missed him so much, you know, I, that's all I want, all I wanted to do is see my new husband. I, um, I flew in, I arrived early, uh, I immediately, I walked into the bedroom, I was so excited to, to see him, and he was so, like he had lost a ton of weight, so I just knew something was up, um, and he kind of quickly, you know, uh, kissed me and kind of, we, we had some interaction, it was brief, he was leaving to go work, he had to work that day, uh, but then uh, after he, the plan was he would come back, which he did in the evening, and then he was supposed to have a three day uh, weekend, a long weekend, so he comes back that evening and uh, the chef had kind of prepared some things uh, for the fridge, mashed potatoes, I think spinach as well. Um, there were some steaks in the fridge, but he had kind of prepped some of the, the sides. And I was looking forward to having this kind of, you know, our style at home date. You know, we'd just been, you know, new, we're a new married couple. We hadn't seen each other for basically a month after getting married. And uh, I start dinner and am happy to see him and at some point early in that evening he pulls out a bag of MDMA. I asked him what it was and he told me it was MDMA and I was surprised because at the time that was you know like um, there was no question mark as to how I would respond to that or so I thought it's like what do you why would you even think that that's okay he had already gotten clean and sober. I was, you know, touch and go. But for the wedding, he was drinking Bex. I think at some point he did have wine on the island, but it wasn't it. It wasn't an issue. Right? Just moved ahead. So I was surprised that he would even pull out this bag, and well, frankly, not hide it from me. And he kind of seemed to suggest that we should do it together. And I was like. Absolutely not. Like, I just got here. I just got here. I want to see you. I want to spend time with you. I, it was the exact opposite of what I expected and what I wanted. Um, and it, it just seemed delusional at the time to me that he would even suggest this to be something that I could participate in with him. If you had been through what I had been through at that point, it, it's crazy. And at some point, um, he drinks in front of me at first, I think it was like a Malbec or a wine or something. And I remember we hadn't, like it, it's that, it kind of started the ar an argument. 
and that was upstairs in that room that we just looked uh, at a picture of, you know, by the sunflowers. That's more or less where we were standing, just closer to the kitchen. And we get in an argument, and I shove past him, just stomp off. And he grabs me, and we have an argument about me walking away, and am I walking out of this? And in my head, I was like, I, I, would, I actually wasn't thinking of leaving yet, but that would later be going through my mind. And we had a, a, a brief interaction, and I don't, I don't remember the exact sequence of things. I wish I did. I have a lot of flashes. It gets a little bit more confusing from my ability to recall everything in a linear way a little later on as things got crazier. But for this part, the first night, what I distinctly remember is at one point, I, 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 I don't think I had gotten very far, or maybe I came back into the room, but he, when he shoved me, I went flying across these parakeet floors. I mean, just skidding across these floors. And I remember thinking it just looked so easy for him to throw me around like that, you know? I, I, it, it, I, I, I just slid, screeching my skin against this, like, beautiful wooden floor. And we had another argument that was a, a spin-off from that. It was just kind of this on off, on off sort of thing um, that I remember eventually in this interaction, he shoves me up against the fridge. Uh, he has me by the throat and he just was holding me there by my throat. And I wondered if the if it was the drugs, I wondered if it was him. It hadn't, in my recollection, hadn't been that long. He has me up against the throat. He's kind of bashing me against the, the wall next to the fridge. We're kind of moving in that area. And at some point, I'm in his face. And he had, he, I don't know if he had let go of my neck or loosened my grip, but I remember slapping him across the face, screaming at him, screaming at me. I got my hand free when, I, when he tried to grab me when I walked off. I stormed off, I slammed the door upstairs. I don't know if it was in that instance or if it was in a later one that I eventually barricaded the, the door um, you know, I, I couldn't, it wouldn't stop him from coming in. He could come in the other doors. You know, there's plenty of, there's a back door, there's patio, but at least I'd hear it. And my, this is March, 2015. By this time I'm being medicated by his doctor. He's giving me anti-anxiety meds, giving me you know, had already tried to give me antidepressants. They didn't work for obvious reasons, I hope. I wasn't sleeping. I had insomnia. I'd wake up with panic attacks. My, you know, I, 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 I needed to sleep, but my ability to do so was really, really compromised at this point. And I kept thinking that um, I just wanted to hear him or know if he came in so I could be aware, so I could be ready for what was going to come in with him. And uh, at some point I go back down stairs. I, I don't really know at what point I gave up and stayed behind my barricaded door, but I managed to go to sleep. I took some sleeping pills. I woke up and when I came downstairs, he was um, still up. Uh, he, he, told, he confirmed that when I asked him that he had not slept, he had not eaten. So I tried to get him to eat. Um, we get in an argument. Uh, he was accusing me of uh, Eddie Redmayne. And uh, at, by this point, he thought I was working with Billy Bob Thornton on the movie I had just shot, but I had already worked with him a year earlier. But he was very upset about him and the gentleman that invited me to a concert in in London. You know, the, the, my co-star, he was upset about these people, even though I had done that movie a year prior. 
who, who was that? Uh, at the, it was Billy Bob Thornton, Jim Sturges, and Eddie Redmayne that he was upset about. And let, let me just stop you for a moment. Have you seen Mr. Depp take any drugs by this point? Oh, yeah. I Sorry if I left that out. Um, that when we had the argument about the MDMA, uh, he suggested to me that it wasn't on the no-fly list, like it, it wasn't on the no list. That was his argue, That was his defense. Like, this isn't then you didn't say I couldn't have this. And I'm, you know, over and over again, Johnny told me I wasn't the reason he was getting sober, but I was the reason he was staying sober. I had saved his life and all this stuff. It wasn't like it was my, it wasn't my job to police him, but I kind of ended up being in that situation, it seemed like, in his mind, you know, when he would express that to me. So he took the um, a handful of pills, and I didn't count how many, but... Uh, when I came back downstairs, I did the math on the amount that was left, and I think it was either eight or ten, I can't recall as I sit here now, either eight or ten pills of MDMA. That he had taken or that, that were left? Um, I don't I remember we had a conversation about the amount that he took. So I remember saying, you, you, you took all... Objection here, say. Okay. I'll sustain the objection. Okay. Um, there were only a, f a few left in the in the bag, so I think it was what he took. And I I said, Johnny, that or objection hearsay. Uh, he confirmed that he took that amount and that he could take that amount. And what amount? Uh, at this point, there were ten. Uh, he had taken ten, eight or ten. I can't recall. And when you say at this point, is that the first night? Is that the second day? This is the second day. This is after I've already fallen asleep for the night in the room upstairs, come back downstairs, he was still awake. Okay, please continue with that second day. Um, he was accusing me of being mean to his sister. He was accusing me of not liking his sister. Something about the wedding. I, I, I was trying to uh, put out that fire, as you will. I was trying to say, no, no, no. First of all, I'm not filming with Billy Bob. No, I wasn't filming filming with Jim Sturgis. Yes, I filmed with Eddie Redmayne, but he was a lovely gentleman. I, Judge I, I honor hearsay. That's not offered to prove the truth of the matter. Overruled. Thank you. Um, and then when it came up with his sister, he um, it, it, it was accusing me of of kind of having this. Animosity with uh, Christy, I, I tried to defend myself, explaining why her and I had kind of become cold to one another. I don't know how else to describe it because we never had any sort of direct interaction that was negative. We never had any sort of confrontation or anything, but I did my best to explain to him um, what, what I could answer to that accusation. And at one point he... Um, uh, oh, I mentioned that, well, I can't say what I mentioned. He, in, as a result of that phone call, picks up the phone and calls his agent. I don't know why, still to this day. Um, he calls a few people. I don't know who's on the other line. I just heard his side of it, and he's screaming at them. I got a sense that it was money, that he felt people had been stealing money from him, and that the studio had been ripping him off, and that um, he was calling himself a like a whore or he had been whored out. Uh, he seemed like he was upset, but I did not at this point, this is maybe early evening, it was before the sun went down on the second day. Uh, I remember he took the phone at one point and called my um, divorce attorney. I had at, at some point prior to this got a divorce attorney, or not a divorce attorney, a domestic relations attorney to do a uh, post nup because we got married in February and there wasn't there was never any mention or or talk from Johnny about a prenup, but I had had interactions with his sister and so I thought okay I'll get a lawyer and let's do let's do a post nup when Johnny found out about that or when I reminded him of that in Australia he went outside and called my divorce attorney and fired her and said the only way out of this was death again. And I heard that already at this point, March 2015, 
um, probably 25 times. So he's screaming at her. He calls his agents. I, 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 I hear um, uh, uh, him talking incoherently, to, uh, screaming incoherently at my lawyer and his um, agent. He comes back inside, and I genuinely didn't know if he was still mad at me or if it was about me at all. I didn't know. It didn't seem like it was connected to, to reality at all. Um, at some point shortly after that, I have been saying to Johnny, you need to sleep. Let's eat some dinner, baby. Let's relax. Please, like, calm down. I, in, my, I, in my head, I was thinking that it would genuinely change if he just got some sleep. He needed to sleep it off. He needed to come down off the drugs. Clearly, the combination of what he had taken pill-wise with whatever else he was hiding from me was not good. It, I had recognized that sort of delusion. I had recognized that sort of unattached to reality rage. I had recognized the patterns of those kind of loops where he's yelling about things that aren't even being discussed or talked about. I knew already that he just needed to sleep it off, clean up, you know, sober up. And uh, I thought we could. I put, I remember I went to the fridge, I got out the steaks so that they would, you know, be ready to cook. And I got out some of the food I was going to put together for dinner. I went upstairs. Um, I don't know if I came back down in my nightgown at that point or if that was shortly after, but uh, the next thing I remember is... Um, coming downstairs and um, looking for him. We had a, a, an interaction that I can't really describe. It didn't make a lot of sense to me. He was just belligerent, belligerent, throwing things, screaming at me. Um, and I realized I was back on the chopping block. I realized it was back. Like I realized that the arrows were pointed at me again. And I tried to defend myself. I was explaining, you know, trying to say that. Objection, you know, Your Honor, hearsay. It was not for to prove the truth of the matter. She hasn't even said it yet. But, but try, try not to say what you're saying unless it needs it for context or something. Try, try, try to I'll, say I'll, what he's I'll saying. I'll sustain the objection. Okay. okay. Uh, he, he was just belligerent. I don't know how to describe to you because it wasn't making sense. It wasn't making sense. Um, I, I don't know how, um, I don't know how the uh, immediate next like string of, of the next part of the violence actually even initiated, but again, he has me up against the wall and I remember this time he slams me up against the wall hard. I mean, I hit my head hard and this is a wall next to the... I say kitchenette, but it, it's more of a bar. Uh, I remember there were these cooling fridges, and I remember kind of being slammed up against those. I remember pushing him off of me. I remember the name calling, the whore, the slut, the fat ass. I remember a lot of name calling. Um, I said, um, had he, had he been drinking by this time? He was drinking. Calls for speculation, leading. I'll just say this leading. What, if any, drinks had you observed Mr. Depp have by this time? Well, I had already seen him drink right in front of me. He took a big swig out of a wine bottle up upstairs right in front of me as a um, as in a gesture of, um, like, looked right at me and sw took a big swig out of it as a, you know, like a, a show for, you know, did it right in my face to make a point. And then when I came downstairs, he was drinking from the bottle. Um, I don't, I, I don't know what kind of liquor. I remember there was another bottle open and I was wondering why he was drinking both. Um, but at some point, um, uh, he, he had me up against this the wall next to the cooling fridges and I remember slamming my head up against the thing he had me by the neck squeezing my neck and uh, it got really 
it got really nasty. It went from like, oh, no one likes you. No one likes me. Everyone warned me about you. That's what it was. He started to tell me that everyone had warned him about me and that he wished he had never married me, wished he had never met me. Um, no, no one liked me. You know, it sounds uh, childish, but uh I, I i remember feeling really hurt and then at some point i shove him hard to get him off me and he shoved me back and he said you want to go little girl Th that um i couldn't as i sit here today tell you if that happened before he choked me up against the wall but at some point um I am in a in a like a, a struggle with him where I'm holding his shirt lapel um, and he kind of just flings me for lack of a better way to describe it throws me um, across the room I land on the a games table it's like a ping pong table and I don't know if I was holding on to him or if he pursued me separate, but he gets on top of me on the games table and is just whacking me in the face, like repetitive. Um, we struggle on the games table. I don't know. I don't know how we get up. I don't know if he pulls me up. I wish I could tell you, but we were in this struggle down in this, this games room by the bar. And um, and we had this conversation about the the drinking or argument about the drinking, and um, he holds up this bottle to me, um, and you know I'm I'm saying did did you drink this whole thing? Something stupid, uh, focusing on this detail, and he um, is telling me that I can't control him anymore, and. Um, that if I really, you know, if I really wanted to try, take it. And then he's like taunting me to take the bottle from him. Uh, if I really, if I really want him to stop, why don't I, why don't I take it from him? Go on, go on. I kept saying, go on. And kind of gesturing with the, the bottle towards me. And, uh, like he does that two or three times. I reach for it. He'd revoke it, kind of laugh at me. And he's holding out the bottle. I think like maybe the third time or so I get a hold of it. I pick it up and I slam it down on the ground right in between us. There's a tile floor, a white tile floor. And I smash the bottle on the floor. And that really set him off. So stupid. Um, sorry. I, he's... Um, it was like a light bulb switch went off. And he starts screaming. Um, I don't know if he backhanded me or hit me normally. I don't. I, I don't really recall. But I remember it sent me down to the ground. Um, I remember by the time I picked myself off the floor, I stand up. He's got a bottle in his hand. He threw it at me. It missed, thankfully, but I kind of pulled myself back into the bar area. I don't know how much time passed, but at some point he had a broken bottle uh, up against my face, neck area by my jawline, and he told me he'd carve up my face. I don't know at what point in the evening. I couldn't tell you what sequence wise when that happened, but it was terrifying. It wasn't the first time he said that to me. He said that to me on the plane as well. Um, but this time he was holding a broken bottle to me. I, 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 I honestly don't remember if I um, threw anything in his direction. I, I don't think I did. Um, I just remember him having me by the nightgown. Um, I remember 
him flailing me, throwing me around. I'm flailing. Um, I, this is after um, there were some bottles broken on the floor. Uh, I think this is actually after, again, forgive me, I wish I could remember the sequence, but it's flashes. He's throwing these bottles at me. Um, I remember retreating. There were also cans, like uh, soda cans, beer or soda cans. And they're coming at me one after the other. And I keep pulling myself into the bar area. There's a bar behind me in like a, I don't know, like an L shape. Though he's standing in the only way you can exit. So I'm kind of trapped in front of this sink, surrounded by bar on three sides with him in front of me-ish kind of front off to the off to the left and he's throwing these bottles one after the other and I can feel glass breaking behind me I remember feeling um, one of them go by my head really fast I mean the, a velocity a real velocity I remember being terrified I remember I couldn't move I couldn't go anywhere um, I eventually I'm trying to I don't, he ran out of things to throw. I think that's how I moved myself towards the exit. And I believe that's most likely when we got kind of in this struggle by the bar area. Um, because I, I remember my feet slipping on the tile as he was slamming me from the wall to the countertops. At one point, he has me up against the, the wall and he's punching the wall. He um, had my, you know, nightgown and it kind of ripped it off my chest. I remember at one point he's teasing me, taunting me that I, he has my, um, my breast in his hand. Um, my nightgown came completely off. It was ripped off of me. So I was naked and I'm slipping around on this tile and trying to get my footing. And I remember slipping on this tile of glass was underneath me and I remember just trying to get my footing. You know, I felt really destabilized and felt really vulnerable, I'm naked. And he's flinging me around and at some point I'm up against the wall and he's screaming at me that he fucking hates me, that it ruined his life. I remember the, I ruined his life over and over. And he starts punching the, the wall next to my head, holding me by the neck. I get free from him. I kind of step back from him, and it's like his energy shifted to the phone. There's a wall-mounted phone on the, on the wall next to where my head was. And he went from punching the, the wall to, like, realizing there was a phone there. And he picked up the phone, and he's screaming. He said, Rah! at the top of his lungs, screaming, I fucking hate you, I fucking hate you, you ruined my fucking life. And screaming at the top of his lungs, he picks up the phone and starts bashing the phone against the wall, against the wall where I was just being held. And I remember kind of having some distance on, on what was happening and watching him do this. And it was like his energy had shifted and I was that phone all of a sudden. And he was just over and over again, smashing this phone into the wall, over and over again, screaming at me. And I was watching the phone every single time he pulled his hand back. It was just breaking into pieces. I, I remember thinking this phone is disappearing. He's smashing it to smithereens, just going into the wall. And at some point, he's on top. Of, 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 of me, no phone, but screaming the same thing. I fucking hate you. You ruined my fucking life. I'm on the countertop. It had me by the neck. And he felt like he was on top of me. And I'm, lo I, I'm looking at him in his eyes. And I don't see him anymore. I don't see him anymore. It wasn't him. It was black. I've never been so scared in my life. It was, it was black. I couldn't see him. And he was looking at me and I was trying to get through to him. I was trying to say to him in some 
way that it was me I was trying to get through to Johnny and I couldn't see him I couldn't see him at all and it, my head was bashing against the back of the bar and I couldn't breathe and I remember trying to get up and I was slipping on the glass my feet were slipping my arms were slipping on the countertops and I remember just trying to get up so I could breathe so I could tell him that he was really hurting me I didn't think he knew what he was doing I don't know how <laughs> Sorry. I'm sorry. I, mean, I couldn't breathe. Please. I don't know. I couldn't, I couldn't breathe, I couldn't get through to him, I couldn't, I couldn't get up, I couldn't get up. And I don't know how that ended, I don't know. I don't know how, I don't know what happened next, I don't know this. I I when I the, the next thing I remember I was bent over um, backwards on the bar, meaning my chest was up. I was staring at the blue lights, and my chest was on this. My back was on the countertops, and I. Thought he was punching me. I thought he was. I'm sorry. <laughs> he was. He was I felt this pressure. I felt this pressure. He on my pubic bone. He thought he was. He thought he was punching me. I just saw his arm, I could feel his arm moving, and I, it looked like he was punching me. But I could just feel this pressure. It was like, it kept hitting me. It didn't feel pain. It was just a pressure on my pubic bone, and I, don't know. I, I I don't remember what I said. I just remember being really still, not wanting to move. I remember looking around the room. I remember looking at all the broken bottles, broken glass, and I remember they just not wanting to move because I didn't know if it was broken, I didn't know if the bottle that he had inside me was broken. I couldn't feel it, I couldn't feel it, I didn't feel pain. I didn't feel pain, I didn't feel anything, I just I didn't want it. I didn't, I looked around and I saw so much broken glass that I didn't know if he would know, if he would know, um, I didn't know if he would know if it was broken or not, and I just remember thinking, please God, please, please. I hope it's not broken. I don't know how that ended. I don't know how I got off the countertop. I, I just remember it being in the bathroom. 
I remember retching. I remember the sound my voice was making. I remember I lost control of my bladder. I remember just retching. I remember there was blood on the floor. Um, I got up at some point. I don't know how that night ended. I don't remember what happened. I don't remember. I have a memory of him begging me not to leave. I remember going outside the front door. I remember him coming out to the front area, but I, I, I don't remember. If that was before or after this, I, I don't remember. I just have that memory. I remember uh, taking a bunch of sleeping pills. Not a bunch, like two, which is a lot for me. <clears throat> I remember falling asleep or I don't remember falling asleep. But I know I fell asleep because I woke up the next day. Um, I assume it was late morning. Um, he, I could hear him downstairs. Uh, I could hear Marilyn Manson, um, music, not in person. I could hear the music. Maybe he said it was Marilyn or maybe I could uh, recognize it. I don't remember, but I became aware of it. That's what I was hearing. It was blaring. It became clear obvious to me when I walked downstairs, he was still up. He hadn't gone to sleep again. Um, I uh, walked downstairs and I saw this um, brown on the walls going down the stairs. And the brown on the walls became clear, like it became clear, like lettering. And then it was obvious it was uh, dried blood. He had written down this that we had a spiral staircase, like white cream walls. Uh, there was blood uh, on the carpet. Um, I could see blood drips. Uh, I, I thought it was from my arms or feet, but it was drips. So that plus the wall writing, I saw this brown letters on the wall and then realized that he was trying, that, that it was a, meant to be a message, but it was incoherent. Um, I saw what looked like my name, um, but I really couldn't uh, make out most of the rest of the message walking down the stairs. Uh, I saw a bird in the house. That was surreal. I went down to the main level where my painting studio was, and I had some canvases out. It was in the living room area. And oh, by the time I got down to the bottom of the stairs, um, the the dried blood had been kind of taken over by paint. It was um, blue, navy blue paint, and then brown paint. <clears throat> and uh, then it was, you know, on the walls, on the um, lampshades, pillow uh, pillowcases of the of the sofa, the sofa cu cushions. There was blood. In the painting studio, the paint, my canvases have been covered with what looked like just brown, blue, green, red mess. It was just a mess. There was a painting that had, uh, you know, a, a painting that the owners had that had, um, you know, like giant penis on it and, you know, some other things. There was a table overturned, a bunch of broken glass on that, on that floor I walked downstairs where I heard the music coming from and that's where I found him um, blaring this music he was in the study which is in the by the bar games table area off to the side and it was just glass and blood and 
broken windows and a broken window and it just it looked like a mess. The table was collapsed and I, I walked into the study. Um, I was a, a couple unbroken empty bottles. I remember wondering where they came from. Uh, and he just looked, he wasn't there anymore. He wasn't there. It wasn't Johnny. He was standing at the office desk. He had his hand wrapped in this, uh, like, rags, or, you know, bandana rags. And I, I think he took them down or somehow showed me, and he said, look what you made me do. I did this for you, something to that effect. And I kind of put together, it was covered in paint, and I put together that that's, like he was using his finger. I quickly became aware that that's what he was using as a paintbrush, even though there was lots of paintbrushes around. Um, and we didn't have any sort of like coherent conversation, as you can imagine. Um, I figured out he was missing a finger. He kind of held it up and I said, what did you do when, like, what, what did you do when? And I realized in my head that there had been many hours since this probably happened, assuming that that was the happened with the phone. Uh, in any case, I I knew it had been way too long that he had had this blood, you know, that he was bleeding, and I, I said, I'm going to call 911 if you don't call Jerry now. Uh, I don't. I still don't recall which of us um, called Jerry Judge, his security. Um, at some point we went upstairs, I, I, he came upstairs, but he went up to the third floor while I was in the main floor, the, the entry level floor. I went to make him a cup of coffee because he was demanding more Red Bull. And I was thinking that's probably not a good idea. I don't know why coffee would be so much better, but in my head it was. Uh, I thought maybe, I don't know, sober him up or I, I don't know. There was help was coming though. And I remember I made him coffee. As soon as I handed it to him, he threw it at the TV and started screaming again. It was like back to, back to square one. Shortly after that security arrives, um, I, I don't know how long, maybe a few seconds or minutes went by. Not, not long, but they kind of find Johnny or Johnny finds them walking out of the front door. And they were trying to figure out what was going on. And as they were kind of looking at him and I and trying to figure out what the heck was going on, Johnny took his um, penis out of his pants and started pee, tr trying to pee or peeing outside of the house, saying that he had more messages for me. And this is in front of security. And they kind of just like looked at each other and looked at him and kind of not laughed, but kind of half you know, played it off and corralled him. It was how, how it looked. It looked like corralling a wild animal back into the house with, you know, w with his penis still out of his pants, peeing or trying to pee. That's what he was indicating. And he went to the wall of the house. And I remember him standing at the wall trying to leave me more, saying he was going to, he had more information for me. He was going to leave me more message, uh, more messages, more, more information for me. It made no sense. And um, J Jerry Judge, his security, and one of the um, nurses uh, shortly after, I, th I think they put me in the theater room, but I, shortly after I remember talking to one of the nurses and she was trying to give me drugs to sedate Objection, me. Your Honor. Hearsay. Trying to give her drugs. She no, didn't overall, say anything. Thank, thank you. you. Keep going. Um, and I just remember... Uh, I just remember crying and rejecting what they were trying to give me and fighting with them about how much they were trying to give me. I, I felt like I needed to figure out what, the, what, what was happening with my life, what was happening with Johnny. I didn't know if he was okay. I, I didn't know. I, I actually did, had no idea, like, could this be something he could die from, if anything, just the, the drugs and the alcohol. 
I mean, that alone, I, I didn't, you know, I, I was, I was, I, I just remember sca being scared and being in this theater room, this dark theater room, and not knowing what the heck was going on. Uh, and uh, I eventually was taken up to my room by uh, one of the nurses, uh, and they, uh, I, I, I'm sorry, Be Debbie, um, or, or suggesting I go up to my room. I went up to my room, and uh, I, I took um, a quarter of what she was trying to get me to take, and I eventually fell asleep. I came back downstairs um, to look for my phone, which Johnny had picked up before security came in. Uh, he picked up my phone and said, we're going to get to the bottom of this. And he wasn't making any sense at the time. I, understandably, just uh, different. Nothing made sense. But he picked up my phone and was saying, we're going to get to the, we're going to, I'm going to prove this. We're going to get to this. We're going to get to the proof of this. Something to that effect. I don't remember his exact words. Um, and he pushed record on my phone. I didn't actually at the time think that he had done that. I, 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 um, I, I had no idea, but I did know that I didn't have my phone when I woke up and went downstairs to get it. It was dead. It was sitting out on the, the um, dining room table by where Jerry Judge was sitting. Jerry Judge was on the phone and talked to me, and I went up, back up to bed, took more of this um, sedative, and fell asleep. Um, and then I think the next day... Uh, went to the closet and took out the clothes that he hadn't painted on. I guess when he went back upstairs, he had um, just like, it looked like what he had done is dip his hand in a bucket of paint and just wiped it on my clothes. Just went and he had picked up another portion of my clothes and put them in the bathtub. And I don't know if he added paint or if he just was had touched them with paint, but it was this ugly navy blue brown paint. Um, I packed what was hackable, what well, hadn't been destroyed, and, um, and, and, and eventually left Australia with, uh, with Ben King, who you met, uh, on the way there. And let me stop you there, because I want to ask you some more questions about those three days, and then we can talk about <coughs> Ben King and, and going home. So do you recall what bottle Mr. Depp was drinking from and then had that back and forth with you and you threw on the ground? Objection, Your Honor. Compound. Leading. Sustained. Do you recall what the bottle was? No, I don't. Okay. Do you recall whether it was wine or liquor? It was liquor. Do you the wine was upstairs. Okay. Do you recall Excuse me. <coughs> what color Excuse me. it was? Um... Well, I believe it was um, white, or, I mean clear, but I can't be certain. I think it was clear. Do you remember whether it had a handle on it or not? No, it was a normal bottle. Like, a, like I, I remember because he was holding it like this and gestured to me to take it. And I, I did try to reach for the bottle. It was a normal size, but for life of me, I can't remember like what brand. Okay. Um, when you woke up that third morning, and came out of your room, what, if any, food did you see? Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Objection, Your Honor, leading. Overruled. Um, there was mashed potatoes uh, smeared all over the bedroom door, um, on the wall, in various places. But I remember opening the door and being really confused at first as to what it was. It had little, like, specks of green in it, I assume to be spinach. And um, the, throughout the house, there was food rubbed in places, just countertops, walls, doors, as I mentioned. And uh, later that evening, I found um, the raw meat that I had left out, the steak, all over the house, or pieces of it. Um, it was cut up. And... Um, he had ripped my nightgown into pieces, into shreds, and wrapped the meat up, like wrapped the steak pieces up with my nightgown. It was this really beautiful burgundy silk nightgown that 
had this black lace trim. I ironically got it from Dr. Kipper for a wedding gift. And it was wrap, I found it, I continued to find it throughout the rest of the time that I was in the house in Australia. There's uh, pieces of it in the microwave, pieces of it in the produce drawer, uh, in the uh, closet drawer. Uh, I mean, just raw, raw meat wrapped up in this, in my nightgown, as well as the smeared food on the walls. It was bizarre. What, what if anything, do you recall seeing on any mirrors? Oh, he had um, written, um, he had written on the bathroom mirrors. Uh, in the bedroom, and I, I believe he had, um, there was another mirror. I just don't recall which bathroom it was in. I suppose it was the one that I went to, which is on the very bottom level, um, where I was um, retching, uh, for lack of a better way to describe it. I think it was in that um, bathroom that he also wrote on that mirror as well. What, if anything, do you recall? In blood and I'm, paint, sorry. I'm sorry. What, if anything, do you recall of any lampshades being written on? Well, he uh, wrote on messages to me, um, you know, things to the effect of go-getter, you know, horror sort of thing, like that, that sort of language. But calling me easy, calling me a slut, um, calling me... Um, you know, like just things about ego and what a whore I was. And, but th it was hard to make sense of it because it was clear he was just out of his mind. It was, I mean, the, the, he wrote on a, on a, on a back of a pillow in blood. And you can tell because it dries like in this ugly brown color. He wrote on the walls going downstairs. Like it took a, in fact, you could see where he, it looked like he had run out of blood because the messages became, it be, the, the markings became clearly letters. And the letters kind of became, like I could see where he had clearly run out of blood or wasn't bleeding enough and went and got paint. And then it became paint and blood. You could see both. You could see where he went back with it. Same with the mirrors. You could, I could see where the, all the dried blood was and... And then I could see a different set of markings with paint and some other material. So I'm going to go back to the time in the bar, and I know this is very painful. Do you recall what Mr. Depp was saying to you when he had the bottle and was pushing it against your pubic bone? He said that, um, uh, that he would fucking kill me. I'll fucking kill you. He said it to me over and over again. He said, I'll fucking kill you. Did you bleed from the vagina as well? I did. Okay. And did you experience any pain later? I don't, I didn't, I wasn't thinking about that. I was heartbroken. Eventually, I realized that I could be hurt because I was bleeding. Um, but I, I convinced myself it wasn't broken, and that that I that the bottle wasn't broken, or else it would be a lot worse. And the discomfort I was feeling afterwards just paled in comparison to how scared, shocked I was, I'm scared. I just married this man. I just married him. And f forgive me for asking this, but I need to just make sure the record's clear. You were penetrated up the vagina into the pubic bone, is that correct? Objection, Your Honor. Leading. Sustained. What, if any, penetration was there in your vagina? Uh, the bottom. Yeah. I can't believe it. 
I'm so sorry. To do that. <laughs> I am so sorry. Johnny I had the bottle inside of me. And was shoving it inside of me over and over again. Did you experience any cuts on other parts of your body? My forearms were cut. My bottoms of my feet were sliced up pretty good. Did you have any other bruising or swelling? Um, I had a bruise across my jaw, I suppose, from the one of the many times he clocked me in the face downstairs. Um, I think um, I think I just didn't make a record of any anything else. I'm going to ask you to turn to let's go to uh, 18 10 well actually let's go to 18 15 Michelle if you can bring that up defendants 18 15 and I think these are all in your honor so yes. we can publish yes, they can all be published Um, is this the game table? Yes, it is. Okay. And is this, based on your testimony, is this where you were, were you on top of this table? Yeah, that, he briefly got on top of me, um, and was pushing on my throat, actually, at some point when I was on the table. I had forgotten about that. And, um... This, though, looks like it um, is after a lot of the stuff was cleaned up because it didn't look quite like this. Okay. And it, 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 did the table collapse? Yes, it did. Objection on our leading. Sustained. What if anything happened to the table? The table collapsed underneath me um, when Johnny threw me into it and got on top of me. Or fell on top of me. I, I, I honestly don't know which one. We can look at 1816, please, defendants. Do you recognize this, what's depicted in this picture? Um, yes. What is it? It looks like, uh, the bottles that were by Johnny on the desk when I came down that last morning, and he was still up, still drinking. Uh, if we could go to Defendants 1817. The bottle shape. The bottle shape. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I don't. Um, I have not. Back to 1816, please. Your Honor, I had used. Is there a question? Yeah. I asked like ask a question. You, what, do you, what more do you recall? You had, oh, sorry. It took me a minute to respond because. It's hard. Um, it took me a minute to respond because I had not remembered seeing the bottle that Johnny was using on me. I hadn't. I didn't have a memory of seeing it. And this picture, um, I wasn't aware of until just the, the other day, yesterday, the day before. And um, and I felt my stomach tighten up, like I was going to be sick when I saw it. 
because even though I didn't remember seeing the bottle, what I had remembered is a pressure, like something square, which is why I thought he was punching me. I was, I feel, I was feeling the square, something firm hitting me, like butting up against my pubic bone. Over and over again, I, I felt that pressure against my bone. It felt like a flat surface. But I, when I realized it was a, an object or a bottle and not his fist, which is what I thought, you know, because his, his arm, I could see his arm while he was holding me down, saying he was going to kill me, but I thought he was, you know, his arm looked like he was punching me. Um, and I hadn't seen this bottle. I didn't know. And then this came out in Ben's evidence because he didn't share it until this date. Objection, Your Honor. Trust stained. And so I recognize it. Okay. All right. Now let's go to defendants 1817. Eight. Do you recognize this area or this picture? Uh, yes, it looks like one area of the bar. Um, obviously, this is sometime later because all, all the liquid is dried up. It's quite slippery. I was slipping all over that tile, that's how I know. Okay. Uh, looks like a lot of the glass has been cleaned up almost. And then let's go to 1818. Actually, I think I'm sorry, which, which yeah, I don't have that. That's not in evidence. Yeah, and that's a duplicate. Let's go to 1819. My apologies. Okay. Do you recognize this? Yes, I do. What is this? Uh, this is close to where my feet were when I was dangling off the counter. Um, when he had me on the countertop by my neck, my feet were slipping on the tile. And I just remember my feet. I remember feeling glass underneath my feet and slipping. I couldn't get up. Uh, I couldn't alleviate the pressure on my neck. So he was crushing me. Um, that's around that, not around, that's next to that. The, all the way at the end of the picture is the bar where I was standing when he was throwing bottles at me. Can we go to 1820? Do you recognize what's depicted here? the area yes that's um to the left would be the where the uh, wall-mounted phone was uh right to the left of that um to the right of that is the little l-shaped bar that i was telling you about where i was trapped and and when you say to the left of the wall i'm oh, sorry mean? is it off the picture or on the picture so if you're looking at this picture Imagine up and to the left at, at person height, at site height, um, was a, like a, and I don't know if it was antique, but it kind of looked old fashioned, like an old fashioned heavy, well, it looked heavy, I didn't pick up the receiver, but it looked heavy when I was watching it break, you know, it looked like these like really heavy glass, excuse me, it's really um, thick, heavy, not plastic, but like a Bake light or something heavy uh, material on it. That's my best guess. So that would have been to the left, and then to the right would have been the, the very end of the bar that you just saw a picture of. All right, let's go to 1821, defendants. And do you recognize what's depicted in this photo? Yes, that's the bar that I was just talking about. Okay. Now, I see a phone on the right side. Is that the phone you were talking about? No, that's not. 
This is a, a wall-mounted phone. That's a, just a, a landline. And you see straight ahead at the, at the very, if you look straight ahead at the picture, on the top part of that, it appears to be some broken glass. Do you recall, what do you recall of that? Uh, I recall more than just this window being broken. This is one of the windows that he broke when he was throwing things at me. My, my body was standing in front of that little kitchen sink you see at the end of the picture. Um, I suppose that's some of the glass I felt, though, on the backs of my arms. Um, like when, I, when, when the window shattered. Okay. Let's go to 1822. 1822, I don't have in evidence. 1822 is not in evidence. My that's, that's exactly why I just went over here. Let's go to 1825, I think. Is that the next one, Your Honor? 1825 is in evidence. Sure okay. Do you recognize this picture? Yes, that's where Johnny was standing. Uh, when I found him the the last morning, that morning, it might have been like midday. When I say morning, it was after I woke up. Um, it was certainly not early morning. Um, and he was standing at that desk, behind the desk, with the Manson blaring. When when I when I found him and told him that I was going to call um, 911 if he didn't call Jerry. If you look in this picture, there appears to be a lampshade down below. Do you recognize that lampshade down below the table? That's uh, one of the lampshades Johnny wrote um, threats or messages to me on. Okay. Then let's go to 1827. Do you recognize this? Yes, I do. That's my painting studio. So when I walked downstairs um, and saw all the all the blood on the walls, I walked into this room first. That's where the the stairs empty into this room and um, kind of my painting area. And those are the canvases that he um, repainted. And do you see, if you look by the white, the white tablecloth table to the right of that, do you see a lampshade there? Uh, yes. I, I don't know if that's the same lampshade or another one. Okay. Then let's go to 1828. And do you recognize what's in that one? I do. Those are my, uh, were my paintings um, that, I don't, I don't know when he did that, if it was before or after the writing on the walls, but he just um, ruined them. So I just want to make sure, I, so the painting canvas that's dark colored, there's two of them there. Uh, well, there's, yeah, there's two or three, um, and then there's a smaller one in the, in, in, in the center, and that was um, uh, his daughter I was trying to paint a portrait of, and that was untouched. Okay, and then, but, but just so we're clear, the one directly in front of you that looks like it's just a, a lot of dark colors, was oh. that dark colors before, or? I am Objection, Your Honor, leading. I said, was that dark colors before? I'll sustain the objection. Uh, what, if any, change was there on that canvas? Oh, I'm a, I'm a terrible painter, but I'm not that bad. That was not my painting. It was um, the start of a portrait, and um, he changed it dramatically. <laughs> okay. And then to the right side, on the other side, of to, more to the right than the one you already testified to, is that what that picture looked like before, or is that? So, it, Objection leading. 
What, if any, changes were there to that picture? Well, the, the three canvases um, were portraits, um, so they looked similar to the one that's in the center that I was doing of his uh, daughter. Okay. And the white that's below, what, if any, changes were there to that, the, the white canvas that you see there? It just looks like the painting was, um, it looks like once he destroyed Objection the calls for speculation. Sorry. Just, just saying. It, it, was there anyone else in the house besides Mr. Depp and you? Not that I know of, no, okay. and no one was around. Okay. Well, do you have any reason to believe somebody other than Mr. Depp did this? Objection leading. I, what, 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 if any, what if any reason do you believe that Mr. Depp did this? Objection. I, I, that was not... It's, what if any? What's, what's uh, leading? No, I'll just, I'll overrule that objection. Thank you. Um, it was just Johnny and I in that house over the course of those three days, roughly. Um, there might have been somebody, his assistant or something, come on, on the first day or second day, I can't recall. But uh, for the majority of the, I mean, for the entirety of what I've been describing to you, it was Johnny and I in that house. And did you do any of this? Did you no. create any of this damage? No. Okay. Um, I'm also going to uh, uh, take a look at the white tablecloth to the right there. Uh, and also, Johnny was covered in paint, so okay. to answer your question fully, um, that's also how I know. All right. So I'm also just going to draw your attention to that white tablecloth over there. Uh, does it appear to have some paint on that as well? Yes, there is paint uh, all over the p place, to say it plainly. Now, the painting that you uh, indicated, there was a, a, a large penis, I believe. Where was that? Uh, I believe it was just, like, if you're looking at this, I believe it was on the wall, almost right next to the painting directly center that we're looking at. That's my best recollection, but I can't be entirely sure. Okay. Let's go to 1828. I think that was 1828. Oh, 1829. My apologies. And do you recognize this photo? Yes, I do. What's in it? And, and what, what was this? Um, this is one of the lampshades that Johnny chose as a medium to leave me messages in blood and paint. Okay. Let's go to 1830. Do you recognize this? Yes, that's one of the bathroom mirrors. Okay. And if you could just look to the left, and I'm going to go ahead and circle it over here. You see red and black there. Do you, would you agree? Yes. Okay. Um, and there were some questions that were asked earlier about that red. What, if anything, did you write on this mirror? I didn't write anything on the mirrors. I was as confused as anyone and hearing that testimony. Okay. Um, and based on looking at this area that I have circled, um, is, is, is the, the black, black on top or underneath the red? Objection, Your Honor. Calls for speculation leading. I say the objection. All right, you know, this might be a good time to take a break. Why don't we go ahead okay. and take our afternoon break, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go ahead and have our uh, break, do not discuss the testimony with anybody, and don't do any outside research. We'll come back here. If... All right, in 15 minutes.
All right, so we'll come back at 4.02, okay? Thank you, all right, thank you. <laughs>